We're on. Okay. My name is Mo Lyons, and I'm going to give you a quick run through of my history with the West Coast Women's Association. It started actually back, way back, when I was in my 20s and I came to the Kootenays and um, uh, initially I was working with an alternative newspaper called The Arrow and then the Women's Center started in Nelson and I dropped into the Women's Center in Nelson but I wasn't particularly involved with it. What I remember about it then was it was in the tower in the Peterson building. I remember it was a beautiful place. I remember Mr. Peterson was all upset because people were clamping up and down the stairs in their work boots. And I remember sticking a sign on the wall saying, free feminist kittens. That's about what I remember about that. I remember the Vita story because she was central to that in those days. And then um, there was at that time a, a feminist newspaper called Images, and it was edited by Marsha Brandy. It was put out by the status of women who were at that time pretty much centered in trail. And then Marsha wanted to quit doing that, and she asked me if I'd take over editing that paper. And I did that for a while, but I didn't really want to do it by myself. So I put out a call in that paper um, for a collective and, and said women should be doing this together. And then Marsha came back and a number of other women, Rita Moyer, other women, came and uh, formed a collective. And then that paper became put out from a collective and has did until it died a few years ago. Um, and then I left and went to Ontario. And I was gone for 11 years. So I came back here in 1987. When I came back here in 1987, at first I wasn't that involved with the Women's Association. I became involved with Images, the paper again, <clears throat> and also with the Images Ad Hoc Singers. And so I was accepted into the Singers and sang my heart out and uh, worked uh, putting out Images again, which was still a collective. Um, and then um, I started a little business on uh, Baker Street called Graffiti Information Services, and then uh, Images moved into my office at that point and we put it out through with the equipment that I had to run my graphic design business and it ran out of there until we eventually in that period of time throughout that period of time eventually we decided to put the paper to bed because there were too few women t doing too much work and it just was it had gone for a very long time and had done wonderful things and it was time for it to quit so we said goodbye to it and put it to bed now during this period of time, um, I wasn't specifically associated with the West Kootenai Women's Association per se, but what I did do was I took up being the co-coordinator of the West Kootenai Women's Festival. At that time, Sally McKenzie was the coordinator of the Women's Association. No, she was the coordinator of the Nelson Women's Center. And the Women's Center was in the, um, above the Kootenai Cattle Company, which is in the old jam factory, which is now the uh, Chinese medicine school. Yeah. And um, so it was in there, and Sally um, was running the center, and she was also the main coordinator of the women's festival, and I said, I'll do this with you. So um, for a number of years, I co-coordinated the women's festivals, and Sally and I did it together for a while, and then Sam Simpson became the coordinator of the women's festivals, and she didn't really want to coordinate them. She was the coordinator of the Women's Center, and I said, okay, I'll take it on. And then uh, Abra Brin came along and said, I want to learn to do this kind of work. So she asked me if I would be her mentor. So I said, yes, I would. And so Abra Brin and I co-coordinated the Women's Festivals then for a number of years. And so Abra is now a famous food shed coordinator, and I feel like she's one of my kids. <laughs> Hi, Abra. And um, so... That was um, how I started getting involved with the Women's Association. Then I went um, on a trip. And while I was away on a trip, some terrible things happened at the Women's Association. I think it was a case of the association be, being overextended. The Women's Association at that point ran three uh, projects. One was the Women's Center, one was uh, Women Works, and one was the Advocacy Project. And so there was one small volunteer organization was trying to run these three huge projects. And it was really too much. And there wound up being conflict. And I don't, I'm not going to get into this at great length, but there was, there was at that then a split in the women's community. And it was very hard for people. But I wasn't here when this happened. I was away. So when I came back, I hadn't, didn't have... Um, I didn't have a position on one side or the other of this argument. 
And so uh, people in the association were looking for a new collective and new people to form the uh, coordinating collective of the Women's Association who could carry it forward through this time. And so I was asked at that point to be on the coordinating collective and I agreed to do that. And then they asked me also to be the chair and I agreed to do that. Another reason that they asked me to be the chair at that point was just by, you know, one of those ways that everything bad happens all at once. At that very time, the federal government took away core funding from women's centers. And so there we were seeking community support at the same time as our association was fractured. And so um, one of the things that people wanted is they wanted someone who wasn't allied to any side of this argument and who could speak do, could speak publicly, who was good at public speaking, could go out to the public and say, we are the Women's Association, we are the Women's Center, and we need you and you need us. One of the things that happened that was kind of funny, in those days I never wore a bra, never, never, never wore a bra, but my friend Becky Kane said, if you're going to go out in front of all those people, you need to look respectable because that you know you don't need to be distracting them with the fact you aren't wearing a bra. So she went and she bought me a fabulous bra, and for all my public appearances, I wore my bra that Be Becky bought me so I could not offend people by not having a bra while I was talking about why the association needed them and they needed us. So we worked our way through that period of time and the association became strong again and, and we did all kinds of good things and the advocacy project became the advocacy center and broke off from the Women's Association. Women, women Works wound up their work and stopped um, being an, an entity. Um, and Heather Gibson did fabulous work with that organization, and uh, Maggie Haley, Haley um, did, and they did great work, and it was time for that to end, and so that ended too. But the advocacy project, as you know, continues to this very day. And the Women's Center once more became the main focus of the Women's Association, and that, that was something that we could handle. So um, a very, some very, very powerful women came and worked with the association over time. Um, uh, Cindy King was there, um, um, Eileen Delahanty Perks worked with us, um, I can't, I, if I try to remember people I'll forget too many people so I'll just stop, stop there um, because there were so many wonderful women that worked with us through that time and, and made the association strong. And of course the women's festivals continued to happen and we had some very, very, very successful women's festivals. We had the most successful women's festival ever during that period of time and that was the festival that had the most beautiful poster ever and that was made by Lenny Normington. I still have one framed on my wall. It was, thanks Lenny, that was, I, I mean, Anne Swanson Grass used to do beautiful, beautiful posters and beautiful artwork for images but my personal favorite and Annie's personal favorite too is the poster that Lenny Normington made for the festival that year. 1991 that was. And um, so eventually um, I, my business, I'd ran my business for five years and I was getting, I didn't like working by myself. I didn't like working by myself and I wanted to work in a political context again. And so when the job of Women's Center Coordinator came up, I thought, okay, I'm going to apply for this job. So I applied for the Women's Center Coordinator job at that point. Um, and that, so that was, uh, would have been 1993, I'm pretty sure that was 93. Um, and there was, there was some conflict, a little bit of conflict about whether I should be hired, but eventually people agreed to hire me to do that work, and, and I was hired to do that. And, um, and I ran the Women's Center in, with a co-coordinator, uh, who varied, uh, for five years. My, the first person I co-coordinated with was Deb. Schwartz. Schwartz, thank you. Deb Schwartz. And she and I worked, I was very lucky in doing that work because I worked with women whose skills complemented mine. Because my skills, the main reason I was hired, one of the main reasons I was hired was we really needed to raise the profile of the Women's Center. And one of the reasons we really needed to raise the profile of the Women's Center was right just after um, I was hired to do that job. We moved from being in a little apartment above where Garrick Cycle is now up to the house that we bought up on Mill Street. And uh, I want to honor Suzanne McKenzie, who's dead now, um, for the work that she did in making that house happen because Suzanne took on making that ha She had um, chronic fatigue but you would never have known it. She, she took on like making that house happen, and she did. She and the other women who she worked with made, got that house for us. And I remember 
after she, after the house had been bought, we went on a tour of it, and it was awful. <laughs> it was just a slum. It was like bright pink, horrible cheap paint all over. There were head bashed in marks on the walls. There were speed drawings from crazed persons and obscenities written on the walls. And Deb Schwartz said, "Oh my God, what have we done?" And then, but what we'd done is we'd bought a beautiful house that Sally McKenzie and a crew of women. Sally McKenzie ran a crew, a training crew of women, and they took that house and they turned it into the Women's Center as it is today and turned it into the beautiful, beautiful place it is today. And that crew of women and other women who helped out um, gained phenomenal numbers of amounts of skills doing that work. And Sally's a fabulous teacher doing that work. And so that was, that was the, the, the creation work that happened for that building. Um, through this period of time, we did all kinds of other things. We had drop-ins of one sort and another. We had, I used to do this thing called Wonderful Wednesdays. That was actually my baby. And so, like, I, I don't know how I had so many ideas now when I think about it, because every single Wednesday we had a different event that featured the work that some of the women in the community were doing. Well, actually, one Wednesday was a fan film, but three other Wednesdays where women, like we had a, we had sex trade workers come talk about being sex trade workers. We had Dukabor women come and talk about being raised Dukabor in this community. We had every single week, we had women come and talk about something that they were doing that, that was fabulous, that they were, that they were involved in. The other thing that happened during my period of time at the center was, um, I, I got hold of Betty Daniel and I said, Betty Daniel, we really need a what I wanted to call them crones, but Betty wouldn't have anything to do with that. She did not want to be called a crone, and she did not want to have a, be involved with a group of crones, and she wasn't at all sure she wanted to even be identified as an older woman, but she did agree to start an organization, start a group of women, of older women, and that became the Coos, the Company of Older Women, who are still active to this very, very, very day and are being honored at this on this occasion and are an amazing bunch of women. Many of them are also raging grannies, but they aren't necessarily raging grannies. They are women who have a long history of politics, strong opinions, a great sense of humor, and have wonderful times talking to one another. And they honor me by thinking that I'm their mom, which I think is just great. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm so glad that we were able to do that. So, um, so these things were, you know, obviously Marsha's waving her finger at me telling me I have to stop. And, and I think I've just about covered it. I mean, there were, I could tell you about like Girls on the Town, which was another thing that happened during that period of time. And before I, when I was the coordinator, there was also the, what was the trades thing that Michelle worked on and that Fran Wallace worked on? The, the, the the books, the mentoring options, project. Options Unlimited. Options camps. Unlimited. It was a the mentoring project. Girls Exploring Trades and girls Technology Girls Exploring camps. Trades and Technology. That happened before I was at, when I was the chair, before I was the, so we did, it's just, an, we just did so many amazing things, but it was just our daily work and what we were doing. And it's in, at the time it seemed like, it was beginning to seem to me after five years like the same old, same old. Now I look back and think, how could I have thought that? But I did. And I have felt like after five years, it was time to move on, which was good because I had said some years before that I thought that a women's center coordinator should stay for five years, should learn everything there was, should give everything she had to it, and then after that it should be another person come along with a new set of ideas who would create their particular vision in com combination with the women they were working with. And I still think that's right, and I'm glad to have found out after five years that I thought that was right. So five years later I left. The women on the coordinating collective at that time said, don't go, and I said, it's time for me to go, and I'm, and I'm glad I did, and, and I think they're probably glad I did too. So that's my story. Bye. Thank you so much, Mo. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs>